So obviously something went wrong here. Um, I guess it's good to talk about how I ended up in this situation. This was the Avalanche Bulletin for Wednesday, January 13th. Our destination was Treeline, which was rated at considerable. Careful snowpack evaluation, cautious route finding, and conservative decision making were considered essential. Wind slabs were expected to be the major avalanche problem for the day due to forecast winds. We knew people had been triggering slabs on the weak surface hoar layer over the last few days. This was what current weather looked like on the morning of the incident before we headed into the field. This was the expected weather forecast for our day. Our plan was to stage at Hartley Lake Road and sled up to the area behind the Three Sisters. We parked our sleds at the bottom around 1,500 meters and ski toured up to our destination at Treeline to 2,000 meters. So we're up here behind the, the Three Sisters and uh, as we were skinning up uh, this afternoon, we were starting to hear natural avalanches rumbling down off the soda walls. So we knew that hazard was, was pretty considerable up there. Um, as we were walking, we were getting shooting cracks from our ski tips um, in a really low density soft slab that was only about 10 centimeters deep and on top of surface hoar from last week. All right. Oh, that's a good crack right there. Another one. Oh yeah. So getting it to slide here about 10 centimeters deep on this surface hoar layer. So when this gets buried a little bit deeper, it's gonna be a really big concern. Nice. So we decided to pick a conservative line to ski. We decided to stay off of a big avalanche path that we, we sometimes ski when hazard is low. And unfortunately on the way down um, in the snow, I kind of lost track of where I was in terrain. And I ended up, you can see behind me there possibly um, the, the fracture line. I ended up in a much steeper, more committing piece of terrain than I wanted to. As I came over the roll, I could see the cracks shoot out on either side of my skis. And at this point, I knew that I couldn't necessarily stop or ski out of it on the sides. So I decided to try and accelerate to get out of the path. And the slab caught up with me and my skis dug in. I fell forward and lost one ski. And at this point, I realized I was caught in an avalanche. So my reaction was to pull my airbag and try and clear my airway, get the snow away from my face. And I could see those trees that are behind me coming up at a really quick rate. So I tried to turn myself around and just keep from hitting those trees. Um, I managed, I was quite lucky, I came to a stop kind of over by those bigger trees on the right there. It is unlikely I could have been fully buried by this avalanche. However, I narrowly avoided hitting some very big trees head first at a high speed. I'm not injured at all. Um, my airbag worked. We were able to find both my skis and both my poles. Um, and so it's, it's a good outcome, but definitely a lot to learn from this incident. Looking back now, this is what went wrong. I underestimated the seriousness of the slab. It was only 10 centimeters deep, with no wind effect, and the storm snow was quite low density. Despite the shooting cracks and other signs we experienced, I did not foresee the potential for the slab to propagate over a big piece of terrain. I skied too far right in order to get the best fall line skiing, and ended up in a bigger, steeper piece of terrain than I had originally intended to ski. I also made a crucial error in not ski cutting the steep roll before jumping in. If I had done so, it's likely I would not have been caught. Now let's take a look at what we did right. 
We chose to avoid the bigger avalanche terrain to our right, and as a result, I was caught in a small avalanche instead of a big one. I pulled my airbag and managed to keep snow out of my airway. We skied the slope one at a time, and Matt was in a safe area when the avalanche occurred. We were also well prepared for an emergency with transceivers, probes, shovels, airbag packs, an inreach beacon, and other first aid and rescue gear.